Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today's lesson is going to be about a poisonous plant known as pokeweed. You might recognize the pokeweed from the berries in the picture behind me. Uh, so let us go ahead and talk about what pokeweed is. So this video is going to be about the development of pokeweed. Basically, I found some growing in my garden and I thought it was cool and I learned about it and I'm gonna share that with you today. So the species name is Phytolacca americana and it's most, uh, most well recognized, I think, by those dark, dark berries. I am gonna add a little bit of a caveat today. The material provided in this video is for educational purposes only. That is because this thing is poisonous and I'm going to tell you that some people do eat it with proper cooking. I do not recommend it, educational purposes only. Okay, so pokeweed. Pokeweed, it creates a poisonous toxin. It is very, very poisonous, okay? to mammals and particularly, of course, that does include humans. So the toxin is a violent emetic. What does that mean? It induces vomiting. Um, if death occurs, yes, it can be lethal or you know, lethal, fatal. So that's usually due to respiratory paralysis. And there is a toxicity scale, like the roots are actually the most toxic. So the roots have the most toxin and are the most deadly, followed by the stems, then the leaves, then the unripe berries, then the ripe berries. And the, but, you know, I do want to say like the ripe berries can still be very dangerous. I mean, children have died from eating a few ripe berries. So please treat them with caution. So in the early spring, the shoots and the leaves, not the root, okay, that's important, not the root, from less mature plants are edible with proper cooking. Um, I am not going to advise you on what that means. Um, I'm going to advise you not to do it, right? Don't eat this stuff. This stuff. Um, this is why if you live in the American South, you may have heard of poke salad. Um, some people will get the shoots and the leaves and cook it properly and eat it as poke salad. Um, it can still be deadly. There have been cases of adults being poisoned because they harvested a little bit of the, the root um, when they meant to get this other stuff. So don't eat the stuff, that's my recommendation. This is a quote from the Ohio Agricultural Research and Development Center. Children are most frequently poisoned by eating raw berries. Infants are especially sensitive and have died from eating only a few raw berries. Adults have also been poisoned, sometimes fatally, by eating improperly prepared leaves and shoots, especially if part of the root is harvested with the shoot. That's what I was saying before. Also, by mistaking the root for some kind of edible tuber or vegetable. Uh, research with humans has also shown that common pokeweed can cause mutations. Now, this was interesting to me because in all of the places I saw where people were talking about eating it, um, nobody was talking about cancer, but potentially cancer and birth defects could be a result of mutations. So again, just don't eat this stuff. Um, since the juice of the pokeweed can be absorbed through the skin, contact of plant parts with bare skin should also be avoided. So when I was handling this plant, I always had my gardening gloves on. So some other interesting facts, it has many, many names. American pokeweed is what I call it. I think that's the most common, but also poke salad. That's like from the poke salad. Dragonberries, inkberry, poke root, Virginia poke, uh, pigeonberry, redweed, red ink plant. You'll see this ink berry and red ink plant is because there was a time when the berries were actually used to create some, some ink, like ink for writing. This right here is not pokeweed from my garden. This is what I saw when I was on a walk with my kids and I was like, wait, mama's got to film some poke berries. Um, so it was this big, big cluster of them. And here you can see like some of the unripened green berries and the ripe, uh, like dark purple or black berries. Um, it does have a, a long history of use in food and in folk remedies. Um, I've even seen uh, other videos on YouTube talking about using it for like poultices and that kind of thing. Um, not something I have any expertise in and not something that I plan to be doing anytime uh, in the future. Um, something that is interesting, I think, is that birds are immune to this poison. And so the berries can frequently be eaten by songbirds. Let's talk about some physical characteristics of pokeweed. It can grow up to 10 feet. Uh, the most common height is sort of four to six feet. In some places I saw three, three feet mentioned. So but it can get quite high. 
And the flowers have four to five sepals. So the sepals here are the kind of white things. And this is actually a photograph from the one that I found growing in my garden. And instead of yanking it up, I decided to just kind of keep an eye on it and make some observations and then share it with all of you. So um, I think it's really cool. Pokeweed, it does not have any petals. So its flowers are comprised just of the sepals. So here you've got this kind of white sepal, the little green um, sphere in the middle is the ovary. Uh, and then you've got this, this kind of um, stem-like structure that they're growing on is called the peduncle. The sort of white connections between the sepals and the peduncle are called the pedicel. Um, but the sepals, they kind of do look like little flowers. Now, I just want to make sure you understand what I mean by sepals versus petals. This is actually a rose that's from, you know, a rose bush in my garden. The petals are the pink structures. The green structures here are the sepals. So in pokeweed, they only have the sepals, no petals. Pretty cool. Pokeweed is also a perennial. It will grow from roots each year. So basically every year at the end of the season, anything that's above the ground will die. So all of the, the sort of branches and, and berries and all of that will dry up and die um, when winter comes. But that root uh, can like respawn a new plant every year. So it is a perennial coming back each season. Uh, I've read that the, the root is really, really deep and hard to remove. I haven't pulled mine yet, but when I do, I'm gonna be very, very careful. I'm gonna dig super deep and try to make sure I get all of it just because of course, the berries are poisonous and I do have small children. So I really don't want it to be growing um, each year, especially if I don't realize it's there. I found the first ripe berry after about one month of observation. So I took this picture on July 28th. This is the first time I really noticed it kind of growing back behind another bush um, and like under a tree where I wasn't really looking. And so I'm not sure how long it took to reach, you know, about a foot tall is probably how tall it was here. By October, or sorry, by August 31st, a little bit over a month later, you can see it's gotten a lot more leaves, more stems, it's taller. I'm having to hold it up. Again, I'm wearing my gardening gloves. I'm having to kind of hold it upright because the weight of all these clusters of berries, there's at least four clusters of berries there, were kind of causing it to like sag down. But right here, you see the very first ripe berry. And this is actually, um, we're gonna see in a, in a few minutes some better pictures of like the process of, this, of the, these berries ripening. So here they are right here. Notice that the part of the peduncle that is connected to the main stem, that is the order in which these berries mature. So you can see very early on, we've got the sepals with the little green ovaries. Now the sepals have been shed and those ovaries have gotten larger. And this is kind of what we call the berries. And then the first one to ripen is the one that's closest to the main stem, down here being the bottom of the berry cluster that's not connected to anything else. And then you see as, we, as the days go by, we get more and more berries. And finally that very last unripe berry is the one at the tip. So that's like the direction that they mature in. You can also kind of see the maturity of the plant of course, everyone's looking at the, the berry colors, me included, but you can also look at the stem color. We see here, we've got sort of green stems. Here, the stem is getting lighter. Here, the stem is sort of turning to like a reddish brown. And by the time we get over here, you see it's very kind of pink red. That's another hallmark of pokeweed is how kind of pink or, or red looking those, those stems and peduncles and pedicels all get. And this is kind of where we're at now. So this is what my pokeweed looks like. Um, I did put this uh, trellis behind it and tied it to the trellis because it just seemed to be falling over so much. Um, I'm not really sure that helped because obviously all these other stems coming off of it are still quite heavy with the berries. But um, at some point when I've got, you know, a, a nice weather on a weekend, I am gonna go and, and pull it out. It's been nice to observe, but I, like I said, I have kids and I don't want them to accidentally eat the berries or something. So that's it for our topic of pokeweed. If you're interested in learning more about some different things that I've got in my garden, I've got other videos on everything from tiger moths to uh, tomato, hookworm, uh, yeah, tomato hookworms, um, beach blight aphid, 
So check out some of my other videos to kind of learn along with me. And thank you for watching Biology Professor.